Hello all. So today we will be checking SAP macros in APU. So to access the macros first you have to come to this transaction SAP APU slash ADVM. So this is the macro workbench uh, where you see all the macros here. The description of the macro books, the planning book, the data view. So macros are always uh, inside a planning book and data view. So under one planning book you can have multiple data views and under one data view you can have multiple macros. So for so we will see like what are the kind of macros and how for a simple macro like how we should be able to write it. If we go inside this macro, this is macro book. So here you see the depot. So in the depot you have you see the macros which are already existing in this data view. So this is the data view. So under this data view we already have all these macros existing. Here you see the elements. So basically these ele using these elements we need to create a macro. Here you see the events like whether the macro is a default macro or whether it's a level change macro, start macro, exit macro. So the difference is if it's a default macro, so whenever a user enters into a planning book or does a level change, loads data, so every time the macro gets run automatically in the planning book. So why do we require this kind of default macro is? Suppose I want to keep a key figure updated always. In interactively I want to update the key figure always instead of via bad job then such scenarios we have these event macros so default macro gets updated or runs default macro runs every time a user enters into a planning book or loads data changes data click on save button so default macro runs every time this level change macro like whenever user does a level change uh, in the sense uh, he disaggregates or aggregates uh, to uh, another characteristic. Suppose if a user has loaded data at ship to country and product brand level and if it's drilling down to product level, so that time this level change macro runs. Start macro is something like when you enter into the planning book it runs. Exit macro is something like once you click exit button in the planning book in 94 then the macro runs. So these are the like events in the macros we have. Uh, so this is the macro screen. So depot elements, events, and keyboard. Keyboard is nothing but uh, I'll show you. So if I click this copy, copy option, so it gets copied to the clipboard. So if I want to use this step in any other macro, so I just I can just click on insert from clipboard then this just gets copied so if you are having any duplicate codes in the macro that time you can use this clipboard functionality you can just click uh, a particular step any step uh, this step if I am uh, using this step in any other macro update to zero so what I simply have to do I have to click on copy to clipboard then again insert so kindly note that only one element can be there in the clipboard so in case you right when you are doing uh, another copy so only one copy and paste you can do at a time now how to write the macro or a simple basic thing so first thing you have to do what you have to do is you have you need to drag this macro button here sorry uh, I'll just remove this macro back to the depot so depot is a place where you can drag and drop so elements also so this, this is called one workplace nor I normally people call this as a workplace okay what you have to do is you have to drag and drop the elements or the macros here which you want to work them suppose if I want to write a new macro what I have to do is the first thing every common in everything is just drag and drop the macro element here so that you get this pop-up now in this pop-up you get like what uh, description of the macro you want to have whether you want to have no direct execution or no 
so this is something like uh, if i keep no direct execution if i tick that uh, it user cannot run this macro in the interactive planning book fgp94 so user cannot execute this macro if uh, if there is direct execution available i mean this is unticked then what user can execute this macro in the fgp94 interactively so this is the option so uh, you have the macro description macro type collective macro or no so collective macro is nothing but um, you can group macros four or five into one macro so that final macro is called as a collective macro in the sense it collects different other macros so we have this some functionalities do not initialize of auxiliary table this will not any if you are using auxiliary elements in your macro that will, will not uh, initialize that so where you want to run this macro you want a details only or you want at a certain level only this macro to be run so you can define all these things here so just uh, press continue so uh, you see new macro so i'll just put some description new macro for test so you can see the macro new macro so the next thing we have lot of options here now uh, we'll just go briefly one after one now if i'm using some user exits in the macro with the help of uh, adapti then i can you know use this element body of user exit macro the step is something uh, ideally is used after the macro so the step is nothing but uh, this is the place where you define the origin of the macro like whether you want to run in the future whether you want to run in the past or whether you want to run in some defined period so you define your origin in the macro if it is user defined you can tell from which bucket to which bucket uh, you want to you want the macro to be run suppose if i click in the past it automatically takes my past bucket so in the past bucket i have only one bucket initial column in the past so it has taken only one column initial if i have the past bucket in this data view uh, around 40 weeks or something it takes all them as in the end here so basically step this place where you define the origin or iteration from how many times the macro should run and from when to when the macro should actually uh, to be run so it's basically more kind of iteration like how many uh, weeks it should run or how many months it should run suppose in the past only one bucket i have so what all steps i put under this step it runs only once okay so i have few control statements conditions planning tables operators like this so control statement are nothing but uh, if else statement so if i want to use some condition if some key figure is uh, not zero if suppose forecast is not zero then only do some functionality copy sales order uh, just for example copy sales order to forecast if forecast is not zero so i want to copy sales order quantity into forecast quantity if my forecast is not zero so i i want to check a condition whether forecast is zero or not so that time i use this control statement so conditions so conditions are like uh, these are like uh, folder kind of suppose i just put them uh, check if forecast key figure is zero so i'll just put a description it's just like a folder so uh, just to understand what i'm checking here exactly like sometimes you know if i don't keep this condition and if i just put the control statement uh, the, the probably the next time someone reading your macro might not understand exactly what logic you are using if it if it's a complex one so what we do we put a condition here i mean it's like a folder or description to understand what we are checking or what we are doing under this condition exactly so this is like that so and if the plan, under the planning table you get the row column cell areas so what like if i am checking if forecast is zero so forecast is a row particularly so i, I want to check if forecast is zero or not so i'll just drag this uh, row here so whatever uh, you select the key figure here whether which key figure you want to select uh, forecast so value change and attribute change value change is something when you are comparing values of one key figure to other key figure like uh, uh, greater than zero or something 
attributes are nothing but if you are comparing some colors if you want to update the cell with the color uh, or uh, or anything like that which relates to the attribute of the row if you are comparing values then you need to select the value or change if you are comparing if you are do doing something with the key figure related to the attributes like fixing and those all then you have to select the attribute change so since we are comp uh, i want to compare uh, value i'll just select value so i want to check if row, row forecast uh, so that this is the row i want to select is equal to now i want to select whether i want to check whether this is equal to zero or not so for that what i do i just take this operator or function here so since already i have zero equal to here so i'll just put zero here and click continue so if forecast is equal to zero then i'll put something to happen like copy sales order to forecast for that again i put one row sales order equal to and another row again i'll put it down to forecast so equal uh, sales order equal to forecast so this is how the if condition is checked and if condition is successful then the next statement executes suppose if forecast is uh, not equal to zero then the next below condition will not get executed and the logic which you are writing in else gets executed similar to kind of c programming or java programming which you might have learned uh, in your graduation so we have functions here uh, these functions are like uh, you know if you are using some complex functions or function modules you can use them this is alerts uh, when you want to generate alerts and delete alerts you can use this this element can probably test them out just drag them and put here this is process message process message is nothing but you want to you know uh, when you're running the macro interactively in sdk 94 uh, after the macro is completed you want to say to user something like macro run is completed then you can just put a message at the end uh, of the macro uh, that uh, message is completed so if you put error information success warning so accordingly uh, it comes with an icon i think we all know like error means that red icon it comes information yellow success green so it comes like that uh, with an icon so this is uh, once i have written my macro i need to activate it so first you just click on check and then click on generate once you check macro if you see there are no errors you can see the pop up will come here that no errors existing in this macro then you can simply activate the macro you want to test the macro then for uh, i mean after you have written the macro you are not sure whether uh, that macro is works or doesn't work uh, properly so you can test the macro uh, to test the macro you have to uh, go to utilities test macros so uh, a new session gets opened up um, so this is like a uh, this new session is nothing but uh, it doesn't save any, any of your data so you can uh, put anything here and just test the macro suppose if it is a simple copy macro from sales order to forecast what i will do i will put sales order 1000 i'll select that macro sales order to forecast copy and i'll click on execute so if 1000 is coming here yeah my macro looks good and it's working if it's not coming then probably i have some error in my logic which i need to go back and check again my macro where i went wrong so this is how we test a uh, few of the macros of course you can't test many of the uh, you can't test few macros uh, which are too complex uh, and uh, which are too complex like alert generation and all probably we can't test over there uh, what really happens but yeah it solves it solves my purpose uh, where can i do that and also if i want to do some semantic checks like if suppose there is some errors in my semantic or code uh, then you can do the semantic check then you get few suggestions which uh, if you read them you probably can understand uh, where you went wrong like suppose if i do a semantic check here so it is showing me these warnings and all uh, like uh, what what could i have done like we have not defined a freely defined interval and all so yeah so uh, you can ignore this 
informations and warnings but if you are getting some error then surely uh, you have to uh, go back and check like what is the semantic or logic or it against that uh, macro uh, and probably you need to correct that so this is something basically of uh, and last thing is like if i want to transport the macro yeah i can select this macro and click on this transport request uh, I think you can only transport the complete macro book. I mean, all the macros under it gets transported. You can't transport individual macro as far as I'm aware of. Uh, I mean, from the standard process, there could be some alternative method which uh, I'm not aware of. So this is something about the macros and macro workbench, macro workbooks. Yeah. So do leave a comment uh, if you're looking for any further information on macros. Thank you.